Hello, sisters and brothers, and welcome again to Love the Word, Live the Word on this 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And we are in year A, the year where we read through Matthew's Gospel. This weekend, we read from Matthew chapter 21. So I invite Father Mike, Monsignor Michael de Vitale, to read the, the Gospel for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He went and he said to the first, My boy, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not go. But later he thought better of it and he went. So the man went to the second son and said the same thing. And he answered, certainly so, but he did not go. Which of the two did the father's will? The first, they said. Jesus said to them, I tell you solemnly, tax collectors and prostitutes are making their way into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you, a pattern of true righteousness, but you did not believe him. And yet the tax collectors and prostitutes did. And even after seeing this, you refuse to think better of it and believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So this weekend's Gospel, Jesus is having a conversation with the chief priests and the elders. And... That's, that's how the church folk of his time. And what he's saying to them, well, he could be saying to us too, as, as church folk. And wherever we are, we ought to hear that. Whenever he speaks to the Pharisees, the scribes, the chief priests, the elders, what is he saying to them? How is he challenging them? And how is he challenging us? So let's dive into our gospel. Which end? <laughs> the deep end or the shallow end? The gospel... The gospel is always has a bottom line of the mercy of God. And we see in this, in this gospel an invitation to accept this mercy. The Pharisees, the tax collectors, the chief priests, the elders of the, sorry, the chief priests, the elders of the people, you know, well, had the invitation. They refused it. The invitation came through John. And here again, in a sense, Jesus is inviting them again by pointing out there, hardness of heart. Jesus is pointing out again, look, look, you didn't think better of it. Well, come now, think better of it now. Recognize the truth. For here, here Jesus was standing before them, the way, the truth, the life. You know, and, and so to, to me, part of, part, because, you know, the Holy Spirit speaks to us all in different ways. And, and, and what I felt coming out of this reading was this mercy of God, always inviting us, but our hardness of heart gets in the way. Our judgmentalism, our wanting to hold on to privilege, all sorts of different things get in the way. You know, and, 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 and Jesus is asking us, let go, let go, let go. Accept the invitation, accept the mercy, and come to me. It, it's, a, it's always a beautiful message, but hard to live. You know, that, 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 and, and Jesus makes no promises of an easy life. In fact, he says, pick up your cross and follow me. And so it is with this. But the, the context as well, I was just thinking once more about the context, that Jesus is in Jerusalem and he's at the temple and he has just cleansed the temple. So he ran out of the temple, the money changers and... Um, and then he said, stop, well, stop doing this to my father's house. And they asked the question, well, who, who is this man? Where do you get this authority from? And it's, it's in that context that he has a conversation about John's authority and, um, with them. And they were unable to answer. And so he said, well, I will not tell you where I get my authority from. And then he goes on to give this parable, which reminds us that Jesus is, is reaching out to them. Just as, just as he says to them, well, you know, you ignore John. You know, and, and, and therefore, you see this tremendous parallel that is happening here. The, the son who is, well, not really a parallel, but the son who is the one who said yes first, all eager, but did not do anything about it. I like the chief priests and the elders who 
said yes to the covenant and, and by their lips they profess, but in their life they didn't live what they profess. They, they did not hear the message to repent and repent. They did not come to conversion. And just as they rejected John, so too now they're rejecting Jesus. So too when they see the tax collectors and the prostitutes come into Jesus and experience in conversion, they reject even that testimony. Which was just frightening that we could end up so easily in that kind of boat. And, and we should take stock because we can easily be like them. The irony here is that we could be like them if we say, that can never be me. You know, um, this word is definitely not for me. Well, take, you know, take stock. Watch out. Because we might be actually behaving, repeating this kind of behavior. The word can't find a space in our hearts. And every single word that we read in the gospel uh, must find space in our hearts, must challenge us in some way. This is a digression, but when you were just speaking about, you know, the word is meant for us and not for anybody else. I just got a, a flashback to Bishop Hash, Bishop Asley Pattinson. We used to say that some people read the word and say, oh, I hope my neighbor listening to that. You know, where the word is always for us in some way or the other. And then another way I think too, coming out of what you're saying is that repentance, you know, that, that we continually call to repentance. We never perfect. We never reach until, of course, we come to the fullness of life in heaven. So repentance is always there and it takes a certain amount, it takes a certain amount of work, you know. The, um, so so what, what do we have in the, in the first son the, the, the father goes to? Repentance. He thinks better of it and then he went. He repented and, and came to conversion, you know. Um, the, 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 the first reading um, of this Sunday's readings too speaks of the, the man who it's very righteous, very good, but then turns to a life of sin. Which reminds, and then of course the other person who lived a life of sin and then was converted, even at the last moment, as it were. You know, which reminds us, of course, that there's always mercy of God there for us. But it also reminds us, you know, that we have to, we can never take salvation for granted. People used to laugh about the line, you know, are you saved? And make a certain mockery of it and so on. Are you saved? And you're supposed to say yes. But, well, I don't know about that. We are saved in the sense we are offered salvation. Jesus Christ has died for us and, we, and he's offered us salvation. But I have to accept it. You know, and, and one of the things reading, the first reading I think reminded me of a little bit, is never take it for granted. Never think you reach with God. Because there's always that danger of sliding away. There's always that danger of somebody catching your eye and you're following them instead of following Jesus and so on. You know, so, so that, that we have to, to be conscious of it and never take our faith for granted. And do all that we can to, to, to as the second reading reminds us, to put on the mind of Christ. To think as Jesus thought. And that way, you know, we will come to the fullness of life. We will come to salvation. You know, the second reading is that wonderful text from Philippians 2 that, that is this hymn about, uh, about the divinity of Christ and that he emptied himself. He emptied himself. And, and such an invitation for us to live the example of humility that Christ gives us. Because with humility, that's where we are able to actually stop dead in our tracks and say, you know, I really should be going this way. And, and, and recognize our need for God. Recognize that we need to say sorry recognize that we are not one up above God, that we are actually in a position where we are, we are needy. And, and God doesn't have to do anything for us because we know our own sin, sickness, but God out of his love and mercy, out of his goodness, acts for us and is continuously offering us salvation. It's continuously offering us an opportunity to come back. And, and you know, that thing about being saved so often sometimes we think you know I, I i've heard people say sometimes i behave myself for so many years you know i can't behave bad today you know i can't do what i want to do tomorrow and yes it's 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 we could fall into that trap of thinking like that it may be something that we see and think okay you know yeah but that's not how it is the way it is, is that God is offering us salvation now. God is offering us relationship with him now. And we can't talk about what was. Yes, there is what was. But if, if we are thinking like that, we behave in like the chief priest and um, the elders. We behave in like the oldest son in the prodigal son story. 
a lot of resentment over, you know, all these years that older son and the prodigal son story in Luke 15 said, all these years I slave for you. In other words, it was, it was duty. It was not out of love. And what God wants is for us to love him. And when we love God, you know, as if, if we love anyone, we are willing to do anything for them. And, and, and God invites us to love him and in loving him to live that love in our lives. Again, not easy. Not easy, and therefore we, we have to support each other on this journey. We have to not look and pull down and laugh at people when they fall and say, look at them, you know, or look at that hypocrite there. It said no first of all, and then they come in now, you know. But that's all of us. We say no, and then we come. And that's where every time we sin, we fall away. We, we turn in our back to God, and then we realize, no, I have to come back. And therefore the church, as Pope Francis rightly says, is a field hospital. It's for the wounded, not the perfect. Jesus himself says, I've come for the sick, not the healthy. You know, and so... A lot for us to reflect on, and even in our way of everyday talking about other people, when we see people coming back to the Lord, it, it reminds us, take stock of your own self first, and where you stand before God. And with that humility, approach other people, approach the Lord, and so build community. And you know, as, as I was saying, it, it, it's, it's not always easy to take up your cross after all Jesus says. It's not always easy to, to follow the Lord. But yet we know it's the way. We know it's the truth. We know it's the life. But we have to do something very often, you know, and, 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 and that's where, you know, we have thank God for the power of the Holy Spirit and for the help of the Holy Spirit. As we heard in the second reading, as you were mentioning just now, you know, the, that, that admonition, well, not even admonition, that invitation, put on the mind that was in Christ Jesus. In other words, think as Jesus thought. You know, God says, my ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts. But we, but, but we can narrow that gap between my thoughts and God's thoughts, my ways and God's ways, by, by thinking more and more as Jesus thought. Because how Jesus thought affected all his behavior, his words, everything. You know, and we pray for the power of the Holy Spirit that that may happen, that God's Holy Spirit may come and fill us, that God's Holy Spirit may, may help us to put on the mind of Christ Jesus. None of us is perfect. Some of us may sin less than others, I don't know. That's not for me to judge, that's not for any of us to judge. You know, none of us is perfect. And so we may not always see the little blemishes of sin in our lives. But pray and ask the Holy Spirit to come and to fill you and to make you, well, I pray for this myself, that I may put on more and more the mind that was in Christ Jesus. That I may be able to think as he thought. Choose what he chose. Love what he loved. And then as we do so, we come to the fullness of life. And once again, you know, what God sees as life is, is true joy, true peace, true love. Not always what the world sees. So when we put on the mind of Christ, we come to understand more and more what life is all about. And we seek to live that way. This is the call from the Lord to us. As the, as the scripture always calls us in one form or fashion, you know, to a deeper relationship with the one who is love. And so sisters and brothers, that's it. You know, sounds simple. But it's a journey, a long journey. And as part of it is learning, as Jesus says in that text of, of the Gospels about discipleship, learning to deny ourselves, take up our cross every day and follow him. Let us pray and ask the Lord that as we make our journey, we may put on the mind of Christ, that we may hear the call to always come back to him, to deeper relationship. Now, today, in this moment, wherever you are, he's speaking to you, he's inviting you into relationship. Open your heart. Don't resist. Don't become an obstacle to his love. And so Praise we love God. the word and we live the word. Amen. Praise God. And so we ask the blessing of Almighty God. Would you? Almighty God, look upon us. All who join us through the media. And bless us, O Lord God. For Lord, your blessing brings everything that we need. So pour out your blessing, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you. And with Praise your spirit. God bless.